everybody, welcome to Found Flicks. On this ending explain, we'll be looking at the 2018 sci-fi thriller Extinction, where a father suffering from strange visions believes that an alien invasion is coming. These visions are presented as kind of a mystery that unfolds over the story, and it's only after a big twist is revealed that we make sense of them, as well as this giving us the understanding of who the invaders truly are. So let's head to the future with Extinction, breaking down the story, the big twist, and explaining the ending. We open on a large plaza outside of an office building, seeing the masses moving in slow motion, going through their daily routines, joined by Peter who steps outside, considering how the world continues to change and evolve, but wonders who he is and where he fits into this changing world. Suddenly, strange lights appear in a formation in the sky, the lights blinding the crowd as it gets closer and opens fire on them, quickly mowing them all down. We see this as a kind of nightmare or vision of Peter's, learning that he has been dealing with these kind of invasion dreams for quite some time, to the detriment of his family. And while he does seem to truly care about his family, the normally charming Michael Pena and Lizzie Kaplan feel strangely cold in their interactions. Hmm, wonder why that is. He probably promises to get off work early to spend time with them, but has another episode when he's packing up to leave. Hearing people on a panel arguing about what we presume to be aliens, hearing if we give them a chance, it would be to our benefit, while the other man vehemently thinks otherwise, believing that they will conquer humanity and action needs to be taken now. Peter then comes to in an office building pursued by a team that fire at him, meeting with Alice in another room, and then comes to back at the factory hours later confused, and disappointing his family who were so excited excited to go to the pier. Alice is growing sick of his obsession with his visions, and she as well as his boss Dave, aka Luke Cage, want him to seek treatment for his issues. But Peter disagrees that it's all in his mind, believing that what he is seeing are actually prophetic visions of something to come, an invasion from the sky. That night he has a vision that seems to clue us into their potential future fates, with a crying Lucy sitting next to a male and female body sobbing, begging for her mommy to wake up. Well, that doesn't look good. Only for Peter to wake up the next morning to the sounds of his girls giggling with their mom nearby, and looks over to the treatment center number, deciding to go for them. He arrives at the massive futuristic whole life building, hearing in voiceover that they provide free health care for all to create a healthy and happy society. But an encounter with a man there makes him reconsider meeting the doctor, the man asking him about what he's seen, and telling him he's seen lights and people dying too, and tells him it's all real, further feeding in to Peter's beliefs. Returning home, he tries to explain this to Alice but she's not buying it, reminding him about a party they're having for her promotion at work and to try to make an effort when her friends show up. Which of course he fails miserably at, choosing to spend his time on the balcony stargazing with his new telescope instead of interacting with anyone else. And oddly, even though there are quite a few people at their place, no one is eating or drinking anything. Weird party! His friend Ray joins him, trying to get him to think about what's really important, that instead of looking at the stars, he should be looking down here for his family. But they're all about to get a dose of reality, as the sky begins to fill with lightning, and what looks like glowing meteors begin to fall from the clouds. Alice joins them, asking what it is, but before getting an answer, a huge sonic boom reverberates, shattering the apartment's windows and blowing them off their feet. The sky grows even darker as more and more lights fall towards the earth, getting everyone inside Peter gets Lucy to safety, but Hannah isn't there, believed to be at Ray's. They aren't there, but something else is, a ship that flies right in front of their floor. Before opening fire, Ray pulling Peter to the ground, and they wait until the ship appears satisfied with its destruction and leaves. They find Hannah and Ray's daughter in an elevator and rescue them, but the halls aren't safe. The ships aren't the only threat the group have to deal with, learning there are deadly ground forces that are killing their way up the building as well. Peter spying a strange figure pass by and kills someone right on on the other side. Let's maybe not go that way, he's thinking as he quietly closes the door, running the other way. Making it back to Lucy and Alice, she is beginning to wonder if Peter's dreams weren't dreams after all. Asking if this is what he saw, what do they do next? But he isn't sure, saying the dreams are out of order. But he remembers seeing David, and for some reason thinks their best bet is to get to the factory where he works. Hearing gunshots outside, they barricade the door and Alice hides the girls in the closet, trying to keep them out as they continue to bang on the door. This thing is 
relentless. Unable to get through the door, it instead stabs a huge knife into the wall, able to tear its way inside. Getting our first look at the invader, wearing a suit that looks biomechanical, covered in yellow orbs and black growths. They stalk their way through the apartment, and Lucy accidentally activates her talking monkey doll, alerting them to her position, and getting right under the table where she's hiding. Lucy staring it directly into its face, which looks like it's actually a mask of some kind, seeing only her own reflection in it. Almost tenderly, it reaches a hand out towards her face, and Peter appears, fending them off and wrestling the gun free. But when he tries it, it doesn't fire to his dismay. They continue to fight, the other getting the knife free from the gun and lunging at Peter with it, getting him pinned to the floor about to stab him, but gets saved by Alice who beats them into submission, giving them a chance to grab the girls and escape. Things are only getting worse in the halls, passing by bodies strewn around and hearing screams and more gunfire as they ascend the stairs to the roof. Peter goes first and is surprised by an attack from a fire extinguisher around the corner, but luckily it's just his pal Ray and his family. Peter steps out to the edge, giving us our first look at the total hellscape of destruction that has befallen the city. Buildings in flames and the entire skyline destroyed. Sure looks like an invasion with intent to completely wipe out the population, giving us even more evidence as he looks out to another building where a group call out for help, only for one of those ships to find them and blow them all the kingdom come. Deciding the safest way down is to use a rickety construction platform to descend the side of the building. They begin their terrifying journey, making their way down the floors until the pulley system comes loose, forcing them back inside, pulling everyone off just before the platform completely gives and crashes to the ground below. Meanwhile, the suited thing that Alice beat up isn't down for good, coming to and getting to its feet, and now has revenge on its mind, using some tech on its wrist that emits smoke onto which a map and location of his gun is projected. Still with Peter, who is in the process of trying to get it to work, as it has a biometric trigger where only the owner can fire it. And after consideration, they decide the best place to head is still to the factory. And thanks to Alice, who is involved in city work, remembers tunnels they can use to get there without having to tend to the troops still on the ground killing anything that moves. All right, they've got a plan. Let's get moving. But before they get the chance, boom, out of nowhere, another explosion decimates the side of the building. And Ray is gone. His daughter screams out for her daddy, walking over and plummeting right off the open side. Her mom grabs her to keep her from falling, but draws the attention of the ship that quickly annihilates them both. Peter's family running back to the halls, coming across another group of invaders waiting for them. Thanks to some random scraps of wire nearby, Peter is able to rewire the gun to be able to fire it, taking out their attackers and making it to the streets. Before they can get to the tunnel entrance, they have to sneak past the perimeter of another murder ship, which first decimates a group that try to fight back against the invaders. Hannah makes it over, but the already troublesome Lucy stops right in plain sight of the ship, standing there like a complete goof. But her mom saves her, snatching her up and all getting underground before the ship lights up the street above. But Alice didn't make it out unscathed, revealing a wound on her side that does not look good. But she's more worried about the kids, again asking Peter what comes next. But he admits he hasn't seen anything like this in his dreams. Our first clue that his visions aren't actually of the future. Alice takes a breather in the tunnels, no one noticing as the invader seeking revenge sneaks up right behind them in the fight stabbing his knife into a steam pipe, obscuring his view so Peter fires blindly into the fog. It appears lunging at him, but Peter gets a rock, bashing him with it over and over, demanding to know why he's here. As they go to remove their helmet, we see through the cracked front inside is a human, and after removing the strange helmet, it's just some kid, not an extraterrestrial being or anything. Peter asks who they are, but he doesn't answer, so he forces him at gunpoint to carry his wife the rest of the way. Initially, it seems the building is abandoned, until the door flings open and a pile of armed men rush out led by Dave, getting help for Alice from a medic. But his tactics seem extreme, jamming her with a device that causes her to violently convulse to Peter's distress. The medic insists it's only for diagnostic purposes, seeing that some foreign object is lodged in her abdomen. Things are getting a bit confusing, and Peter is confused too, noting they seem prepared for this. And he's right, Dave's saying they've been preparing for this day for a long time. As the forces descend from above, beginning to tear into the roof, Dave informs them they're heading to a train station underground. And while the medic says he can't help Alice, the kid Miles says he can. So Peter stays behind, sending the girls to safety and promising he's going to get their mom better. What's that? You guys smell something in the air? 
Twist time! They set up a makeshift OR using Peter's pocket knife to cut Alice open, inside seeing some very non-human glowing blue electrical inside. So she's a robot, but Peter doesn't quite get it yet until Miles reveals that in order to keep her alive is going to need another source of power i.e. Peter. They play with him being human for a moment as he first cuts into his chest as instructed, but after opening his chest flaps, his insides glow in eerie blue. Yep, he's a robot too, as is everyone else we've seen up to this point except for Miles. This explains the oddly cold chemistry between the characters, especially in the beginning, as well as the party scene with no one eating or drinking. They're all synths. Miles does the rest of the procedure, warning it might not work and end up killing them both. But Peter goes for it anyway, electricity jolting through him, causing him to flash once again, this time giving us the full context of his visions, which we now understand took place in the past and not the future. First, hearing the same debate from earlier, but now hearing they are discussing AI, not aliens as we might have thought previously, and how the synths will eventually overthrow humans. At this point, Peter seems to be working as a maintenance man at an office building, seeing Alice acting as a maid across the floor, who drops something, a woman passing by her insultingly calling her a sin. So we see AI has advanced enough to create lifelike human forms, but they're only given service positions in society and treated as lesser beings. Peter picks up what she drops and places it back, Alice asking him why he did that, but he says he doesn't know. It seems the AI are beginning to have emotions, or at least the beginning seedlings of it, which is why the humans decide they have to be wiped out, as well as replacing seeing humans, seeing protesters outside with signs about robots taking their germs. And it appears the widespread decommission has already begun, as troops enter the building hunting after Peter, who is able to best them all and beats the absolute hell out of one of them until he's pulled off by Alice. The androids are able to neutralize the human threat, and it seems the remainder of humanity all leave the planet, hearing on a PA about a planetary evacuation being in progress. Looking up to ships in the sky, Dave declares this to be the last of them, but warning that they they'll be back someday, knowing humans just can't leave things alone, stupid humans. About to move on, Alice tells them to wait, spotting Lucy crying over two bodies with Hannah. Peter assures her that they are the same as them, and the girls are no longer alone, hugging Peter and becoming part of their family. So it was actually their previous parents that were killed in the first strike on the androids, and Peter and Alice since then take over as their new family. And interestingly, their parents were human, obviously purchasing the android girls to act as their kids, and killed by other sense for being human. Even though the androids were successful in defeating the humans' uprising, they feel guilty over what they had to do to survive, and all elect to visit the whole health building in order to have all these memories erased. All the synths going through the same process, and effectively forgetting as a whole about what happened, and moving on to inhabiting the planet that was left behind by humanity. Fully remembering the entirety of his past, Peter wakes up to Alice still unconscious but at least breathing. Peter tells Miles he remembers the war now, and how the humans tried to wipe them out and they try to forget. Miles coldly responds that it must be nice to choose what memories you get to keep. His hostility causes Peter to ask why he chose to help them. Miles telling us that his grandparents were chased off the planet 50 years ago and they've been living on colonies on Mars since the first attack. It took them all these years to mount their counter strike on Earth, wanting to destroy the synths who as the story goes are monsters and savages. But Miles realizes now that that is wrong, saying that's only one side of the story and that he didn't sign up to be killing kids and families. Even if synthetic, they clearly are emotional beings and care about their families. After being with Peter and even him wanting to save Alice, Miles recognizes they are not the monsters they have been told about all these years. Alice regains consciousness and seems okay, Peter introducing himself to the kid and giving him his knife in appreciation for saving her life. Just as nearby the humans bust their way into the compound from above, Alice and Peter fight their way through the gunfire as more humans swarm into the bunker. Oh, and don't forget the monkey. Dave and the girls wait as long as they can at the train station, but the forces are getting too close and have to get moving. Moments later, Peter and Alice make it just in time to see the train pulling away, but they're nice enough to stop. The girls running out and hugging their parents, but they better get back on the train as the humans bust inside, though the giant laser cannon on the back of the train makes quick work of the threat and allows them to escape. On the train, Peter asks Dave if the others know about the first attack, and he confirms that everyone has
had their memories wiped to be free of guilt. But a few, such as himself, kept their memories in order to prepare for the human's inevitable return. He believes that this conflict is far from over, heading to safety in an underground bunker for now to regroup and figure out their next plan. The train pulls out onto a picturesque view, the sun shining brightly as the tracks of the train disappear underneath the water after they pass. Peter then considers the same question he was wrestling with at the beginning of the film. Who am I? And now he knows who he is as well as his enemy, noting that we're not that different and if others can see that, we'll have a future after all. I think what he's talking about here is that his supposed enemy isn't really his enemy. Sure, they try to kill them all twice, but the most important relationship to look at in the film is that between Peter and Miles. They started as enemies, but came to realize that there is more to the story than that. As Miles comes to understand the synths aren't monsters, capable of real emotions. And Peter sees that there is kindness in humanity as Miles helped him save Alice's life. I believe he's saying the way to survive and have a future is to find a way to come to an understanding with each other, instead of trying to wipe each other out to assert dominance as a species. That will only end in more death. Certainly peace amongst the species is the best way forward. And Peter now realizes that this could be possible thanks to his experience with Miles. This brings us to the conclusion of our look at Extinction. I do appreciate the way the twist adds a new way to reconsider the movie up to that point, and the action throughout was well done as well. The idea of man fearing technology overthrowing us is certainly not a new one, but the way the story is presented makes it feel fresh keeping what's truly going on a mystery to the viewer until much later in the story. The movie honestly still felt a bit lacking overall, and I can see why it was dumped from theatrical release by Universal. But it does stand above the average quality we typically get from standard Netflix fare. What did you guys think of Extension and its big twist? Do you think the humans and synths can get along? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Foundflix. See you next time. Love the robots, it's the only way.